Good evening. I know y'all was looking at for me right at six o'clock, but I wasn't quite ready yet. So I'm here. I'm here to talk about this issue that seemed to be a fireball today. So let's talk about it. Um, I'm glad that you guys are here. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, cuz, Tamika. I ain't seen you in a long time, girl. I miss you. It's been too long. Let me give you guys a few minutes to log on before I get started. It's, it's amazing to talk about this tonight because this is a growing trend in salons everywhere. And I need to talk about this. Uh, you guys know I'm the taboo talker, meaning I talk about taboo topics in the beauty industry that most people don't want to talk about. What qualifies me? I've been in this industry 24 years. I'm a licensed cosmetology instructor. I instructed in the cosmetology beauty schools for 18 years. And I love this industry. Uh, I started doing hair at a very young age, just playing, didn't even know I had the talent in. Honey, who knew? So good evening. Hey, Keisha. Hey, Donna. Hey, Miss Devaney Simone. I don't want to mess up your name, girl. Hey, Dolores. Hey, Kiara. Okay, I like this spelling. How y'all doing this evening? So earlier today, I put up a post and it started a fire. So I'm here to put the fire out. And what I don't like is that people try to troll on your social media pages for clout. And um, I don't like stuff like that. It's really... Uh, Frustrating, but guess what? You can't hear me? Okay, all right. Well, let me find out what's going on with the volume. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Y'all can hear me? Okay. Okay, Dolores, it might be your phone. I got a thumbs up from someone. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. All right. So, yes. Yeah. So, earlier today, I made a post in reference to cosmetologists offering weave services without shampooing um, their client's hair prior to the service. And it caused a stir. So much of a stir, there was a troll on my page that wanted to try to come for me. Now, under normal, normal circumstances, I don't clap back. But when you start coming against my industry, I got to speak up because I'm not going to let anybody, anybody degrade the industry with their thoughts and they're not even an active cosmetologist. That, that right there is not going to fly by with me. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we had some back and forth going on. And I just want to bring factual information to the table because this person was saying um, that they were, you know, bringing facts and, you know, they really weren't. Um, to me, facts are legal facts. I'm talking coming from the State Board of Cosmetology. When you start talking facts, you got to come from the State Board of Cosmetology. Uh, we got to go into the uh, sanitary rules and regulations. We're going to talk about statutes and laws. And just like lawyers and just like doctors, as cosmetologists, nail technicians, estheticians, barbers, and I'm going to throw the braiders in there, we are supposed to know what those regulations are for our industry, okay? Thank you, Jessica. And so with that being said, it's like, it's not gonna fly by with me. Let's just deal with the law, okay? So as a licensed cosmetologist in this industry, from day one of you entering cosmetology school, as a matter of fact, I think it's chapter 16 now in the, cos in the My Lady uh, cosmetology book, 
they teach you about shampooing and conditioning the hair. Okay, that is not an option that should be given in the salon because if it wasn't a requirement, it wouldn't even be in the cosmetology book. Even under the barbering law, the barbering law states that barbers are also allowed to shampoo their clients. Okay, now, um, when it comes to providing strenuous hair services in the salon, you should not give your client an option to opt out of a shampoo and a condition or a shampoo and a treatment. To kill all of that noise, as a stylist, you should add it into the service, period. It shouldn't be a, this is all a card. You can opt out of getting a shampoo if you want to. And a couple of people were saying things like, well, the, the clients, um, they don't want the shampoo. So my question to you is when you go to the doctor's office and you say, you call the doctor's office to make an appointment, you tell them what you're coming in for. They're like, okay, you're coming in because you have the flu. Okay, you think you got the flu. Come in. You come in for your appointment. You get to the back with the doctor. The doctor is one, going to consult with you. They're going to consult with you just like we should be consulting with our clients. They're going to ask you questions and then they're going to start analyzing you. Okay, so that's considered a consultation and an analyzation. That is what we're supposed to do in this industry, period. Okay, after the doctor consults with you and starts analyzing you, they take your blood pressure, they check your heartbeat, they open your mouth and look in your throat, and then they look in your ears. And they follow through the rest of whatever procedures they need to, to make a valid assessment. That is exactly what we're supposed to do in the salon. There is no reason, no reason based on sanitary regulated rules by law that we are offering services in the salon and we are not by your own two hands shampooing and conditioning someone's hair before proceeding with any services. First of all, let's check this record, okay? And see, if you don't have a license, you don't have no skin in the game, you can't even talk to me on this live. That's first off, okay? I'm gonna go there because see, I have to because too many of us don't stand up for what is right and we are now starting to come together to do that. And my platform is a place for us to band together and we're going to speak on what's right and what's fact. So if you're watching this and you are a cosmetology student, I ain't talking to you, but listen and learn. You ain't got no skin in the game to come for me and say nothing to me about anything because I have been doing this too long. You, you watch and you learn and you listen and take notes, okay? If you are not a cosmetologist and you are doing hair in anybody's shop and you don't have a license, you can't say nothing to me because as far as I'm concerned, you're uneducated. That's two. Three, your clients do not understand hair structure. They don't understand what scalp diseases and disorders look like. We have 1,500 hours because we were taught from school how to analyze the scalp and look and see if someone should not even receive a service regardless of what they ask us for. It's our job to turn you down and say you can't get that today. It's our job to have integrity and do what we were taught from the foundation of cosmetology school, okay? Granted, I'm not going to take into account Everybody went to a great cosmetology school because all cosmetology schools are not created equal. But one thing I do know, they have to teach you the foundation and shampooing is in there. Okay. So with that being said, as a licensed stylist, it is your job to educate your client when they sit in your chair, regardless of whatever service they're getting about what's going on with their scalp, what type of shampoo they need, why you're using the shampoo you're using, why you're using an antiseptic, why I'm using a, cal a, a, a deep cleansing shampoo or a clarifying shampoo, why am I using a hydrating or moisturizing shampoo, why am I towel blotting in between the shampoos to make sure the shampoo does its job, why am I going to condition your hair and blow your hair out with as less tension as I possibly can before I braid your hair down and add hair extensions? So if we're not doing those things, which are facts, 
I want somebody to try to check me on it, which are facts. If you're not doing those things because you're trying to take the easy way out, well, I don't want the client in the shop all day, then you need to hire a shampoo assistant. Train your shampoo assistant to do whatever it is that may be too time consuming for you because you have a mindset of this is the schedule I operate on. Nothing wrong with having a scheduling system. Nothing wrong working on a schedule. But if you know, I don't want to do these parts, but I need to hire somebody to do these parts, then that's just what you need to step up and do. But to say that it's okay, or my clients choose, or I know my client well enough, let me tell you something about your clients. The first time you mess up, your client ain't, ain't going to be your client no more, okay? Because let me tell you, clients are cool with you when it's all going good. But when something go bad, baby, let me tell you something. That client will switch a, flip a switch on you so quick, it'll make your freaking head spin, okay? And one thing I can tell you is when your client leave your door, that is no longer your client. They are free game. They are anybody's client. That's check one. Check two. You got one time to mess up with a client that you've been doing for 10 years. And I promise you, if they smart and if they know their rights, they're going to contact State Board. They're going to file a complaint on you and State Board is coming to your shop. That's how that goes down. You cannot trust anybody. And if you're doing what you're supposed to do legally by law, and I'm going to get into Section 40-13-350, sanitation regulations must be posted in the salon. You know why that's supposed to be posted in the salon? Because your clients have rights. Your clients can go and look at that. And they can read and say, well, this person isn't following regulation and I don't see the sanitation happening here and I refuse to get my hair done here because what this say on this wall and what I see going on don't match. It is there to protect the client. And it is there for state board to walk in and say that you know what you're supposed to do when it comes to sanitation and disinfection in the salon. So when you are in in awe of not paying attention to what's going on in your salon and you're not going forth with carrying those rules and regulations within your business, when state board comes in, they're going to say, but you have this posted here and you know this. So by law, I can find you. By law, this is a violation and you have it written here. So it's there for the public. It is there for your salon. It is there for you. It is there for everybody that works in your shop. So as a salon owner, if you have booth renters working in your salon and you're allowing cosmetic, I'm talking about cosmetologists. I'm not talking about braiders because that's a whole day on the barber board. The cosmetology board don't even recognize braiders. That's a whole nother conversation. But see, y'all don't go to the meetings. Y'all don't go to the meetings and y'all don't know what's going on. Because the last meeting that I went to, let me go ahead on and pull this up on my screen real quick. The last meeting I went to in the South Carolina Board of Cosmetology board meeting, 9 a.m. November 12, 2019. There was, let me read how many violations there were for y'all. Because if you go to the meetings, you will know. But since we don't go to the meetings, we don't know what's going on. But let me tell you how State Board ain't really playing with us no more. Okay. Let me go ahead on and find that real quick because it's not a game out here. I want to say there was like 31 vi salon violations on that particular docket that they talked about. And when you go back and read the minutes of what happened in those meetings, it will tell you what they did to these salon owners. Either they lost their license, they put them on probation, or whoever was working in their shop that was not licensed and that was in there practicing cosmetology or practicing nails or practicing makeup or whatever without a license, they were they were notified and fined and had to come to court. Some people showed up to court, some people didn't show up to court. So what happens is your salon becomes red flagged because you are not following all the laws and regulations that's posted on your wall. So what I don't like and what I can't stand is for somebody to try to tell me their reasonings behind why they're not following the law. You breaking the law. You doing sew-ins without shampoo and hair. You breaking the law. Now, braiders, let's talk about it. Braiders 
are licensed online. They do not go to school. And their license consists of them taking a multiple choice test that has the state board sanitation and regulation and all the rules is on the test that they take. And they also teach them on that test or they also take this test and they have to be able to identify, identify scalp diseases and disorders. It's on there too. And guess what? In most states, they have it listed as a braider cannot shampoo hair. A braider is not supposed to apply hair extensions. They're only supposed to braid natural hair. A braider is not supposed to apply hair wefts or hair weaves by the way of sewing. It is not under the category for a braider to do that. Only a licensed cosmetologist. So if you're a licensed cosmetologist and you're braiding in a salon and you're not shampooing and conditioning people's hair, you're still wrong. You are still wrong because legally you took a test that said, I am aware that I'm supposed to do that. You signed off saying that I'm aware. You passed a written test. You passed a practical test. And you signed up for this. Nobody forced you. So if you don't know the law, it's your fault. So what I'm saying to you is there's no excuse. You can sit here and tell me whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. By law, you're breaking the law. That's just like driving around with a suspended driver's license. You drive around suspended driver's license, you get pulled over. That officer has the right to write you a ticket or take you to jail because you broke the law. And y'all are breaking the law. And see if your clients were smart enough. They could, if they get mad enough, they will call state board and, and file a complaint. So let's just say this, for instance, you do a, you do a sewing on somebody. You don't shampoo, you don't condition their hair and they take their hair extensions out 60 days later. And now they got traction alopecia. Their edges is gone. They miss a hair in the top. They like, oh, you braided, they call you. Oh, you braided my hair too tight. Um, my hair is shedding. Um, I never seen this much hair shedding before. I have a bald spot and da, 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 da. And you're like, well, I mean, I did everything I was supposed to do. What you want me to say? Um, you must have left it in too long. Or maybe you didn't shampoo your hair or whatever, whatever, whatever excuse you make. It's all, it's all fine, well and good. You make all them excuses you want to. But if that person decides to take you to court, when you get in front of the court of law, they are going to refer back to the law of the rules and regulations of sanitation. That is where they're going back to with you. And because you are licensed, they're going to pull the record. Did you or did you not get licensed by your state? Yes, I did. Did you shampoo and condition your hair prior to the hair extension services? No, I did not. Did your client sign a release form? No, they did not. Let me call a witness. And they call a licensed trichologist. Tammy Charles is, Tammy, Auntie Tammy is my witness. They call a trichologist up there on the behalf of the state to testify and say, as a licensed cosmetologist, they know they're supposed to shampoo and condition hair before applying hair extensions. Guess what you think is going to happen to you? You're getting sued. Point blank in the story. It happens all the time. It's just that we don't, we don't hear about it or we don't know about it, but all of this stuff is on the state board website. If you want to see who just recently has some situations in their salon to where they have people working in a shop that were unlicensed, all of that's on the state board website. So there's no excuse that you are not educating yourself. Just like any other profession that has to go through LLR, it is your job to know what comes with the license you hold legally by law by LLR. And it's the end, end of the story. It's no conversation. And I'm not coming for nobody, but when I am telling you, sis, you're wrong. You need to stop doing that because it's going to come a day and it might not be today. It might not be tomorrow, but it's going to come a day. To where that thing gonna come back on you and you gonna wish you never had done it. And I'm telling you for a fact because I know stylists that have been sued. I know stylists that have been sued and didn't protect their business and didn't have their business listed as an LLC and they got sued and had to close their shop 
And whoever sued them, they, they, got, they were able to get all of their personal assets and money. They had to pay them out. So how would you feel if that was to happen to you? Is the money that good for you to risk your license based off something that a client said who didn't go to school and get 1,500 hours? Is your business like not important to you at all? So when I hear the stupidity and I said it out my mouth, when I hear the stupidity that comes out of the mouth of licensed cosmetologists, I have a problem with it. And yes, I said stupidity because that is a stupid decision that you're making. And I have been in this industry a long time and I have seen a lot of stuff that could go bad. So my job is to educate you guys out here that you need to go and understand what's going on in your state laws. You need to understand the changes. Every single year, state board makes changes. If you don't go to the meetings, you don't know what's going on. If you don't go to CU classes, you won't know what's going on. And it's your job to know. So when things go bad and somebody sues your salon or state board comes in and they shut you down or state board starts finding you, you have no excuses because nobody made you go down there and get a cosmetology license. And I'm tired. I'm tired of excuses. I'm tired of hearing the back and forth. I'm here to set the record straight. If you are being disgusting and nasty, state board going to shut you down and your clients got the right to file a complaint against your salon. So you better know better and do better and make a change. And I was very surprised to see how many people responded saying that they allowed their clients to opt out of a freaking shampoo. That is just ludicrous to me. And it makes me think, why are you even in this industry? Because if you understood what goes on underneath the scalp and how our scalps push out all types of toxins, you wouldn't even want to do anyone's hair without shampooing their hair. That is just crazy to me. So that's the end of that. And if you want to look up this on your own, you can go to the LLR website for the South Carolina. I'm talking about South Carolina. Um, section 40-13-350 and then section 40-13-110 number 7. OK, so for the person who wanted to come for me talking about the facts, baby, there's the facts. You cannot fight against the law. The law is the law. And I didn't make the rules. None of us made the rules. Half of us don't go down there and open our mouth and be vocal when it comes to these changes because I was just down at the state board in November. So when it was brought up in the barbering board, I go to the barbering board, too. And when it was brought up in the barbering board about should um, braiders go to school, should they be required to get a certain amount of hours, I was right there with my hand raised, yes. They should go to school and have to get at least 750 hours to practice as a braider because there's so much that they do not know or understand about the hair. They don't understand hair structure. They don't understand treatment processes. They don't understand. And that's why we have a worldwide epidemic of people walking around here with freaking alopecia. It come from the braiders and uneducated stylists. And I said, and if you don't like it, get off my life. And I don't care. I am tired of it. Because now all of us cosmetologists are having to go back to school for trichology so we can help these clients that have hair loss. Some of them can't be saved. Some of them is way too late. And I know too many people that do hair without a license. And then when you get somebody like me who say something about it, now I'm being a hater. Now I don't want people to make no money. No, boo, go to school. When I see and I know you talented, I hit you up on your DM. I hit you up in messenger and say, girl, you need to go to school and get your license. And there's a respect factor that comes with that thing. It's not just about doing hair and flipping a curling iron and pumping a chair. This is our livelihood. And we have politicians and we need to get somebody to lobby for us and be a voice for us. And we need money so we can get somebody to lobby for us to speak on our behalf on that Senate floor because they keep trying to deregulate our licenses. Can you imagine what will happen if people are out here non-licensed? Doing hair for real, for real? Like if they just totally eliminated licenses altogether? I mean, I'm just being honest with you. It is too much. You guys, the public will be at risk. We're talking about a health risk. 
It's past just doing hair. And we got to stand up and we got to fight. And we got to speak up. When we see this crap on social media, we have to speak up and say something. We got to learn how to band together and be a voice out here. And these future professionals that's coming out of cosmetology school with this quick mind mentality that they're going to become millionaire stylists overnight because they see these people on YouTube and all of this or whatever. Half these people don't have no licenses. They the ones that causing everybody to get hair loss because they teaching all these new methods with this glue and with this got to be glued. Let me talk about it. Got to be glued is not a glue. The doggone hair stuff is a gel. It's a gel. On the back of the bottle, it says for professional use on the hair. You are not supposed to use got to be glued on nobody's scalp and blow dry glue down no wig. The spray either. It's for the hair. It says it on the bottle. But we let these YouTubers and we let people not license come in our industry and start these techniques and we followed along like little crabs and the little, little crabs we just gonna do what they do because this thing look good and that thing is slayed and girl that thing is melting but what you're not realizing is it's causing that product to seep down in the follicle and what's happening is it's clogging up the follicles and people's guess what happens when the follicle gets clogged with toxins your body our bodies are created to protect itself. Your skin and your scalp starts to say, hold up, something wrong, news flash, alert here, this ain't right, and start pushing hair out the follicle. And your client walking around here, skin, scalp, ball, shiny ball, and we can't bring no hair back because we contributed because we want to melt some daggone lace. Get your education together. And I'm saying what I'm saying because it needs to be said. It is a worldwide epidemic. And we as cosmetologists got to start, got to stop following behind people that aren't even professional in our industry. And the ones that are professional in our industry that are doing things that are unethical, you need to not follow suit. Just go take a class and learn from somebody who has developed a product for the scalp. I'm going to just say it. Uh, the hair diagramma. Miss Tamika, she created a product for the scalp. She created a barrier that goes on the scalp before even applying the stocking cap, before applying the glue. She created that to keep people from getting hair loss. But we too busy trying to melt some freaking lace. And I am over it. I am sick and tired of it. And if you want to come for me, you better come with the law and the facts because I'm going to stand up and I'm going to continue to talk about it and talk about it until people just get tired of hearing my mouth. And I don't care if you're a troll. If you're a troll, troll on. Share that. Run, tell that. I said it. So what? I got skin in the game. I've been doing this a long time. And a lot of y'all clients sat in my chair because they had hair loss from y'all, put relaxers on their scalp and not basing those people's scalp with the right product. And I had to sit there and bring their hair back, taking me a year and a half time of manipulating that scalp, of using different types of products and, and different types of tools on the scalp to stimulate the scalp to get the blood to flow to make the hair grow back. I had your clients in my chair. And guess what? When your clients sat in my chair, they paid two and three hundred dollars for my scalp treatments for their hair to grow back. And guess what? They stayed for 10 years. And that's a fact. And anybody that knows me from Charleston can attest to that fact. And enough is enough. So what I am saying, guys, we got to spread the word. Share this video. Share this live. If y'all have questions, I'm your girl. I'm all about state board. So if you don't know, now you know. And if you have not registered for my CEU class, yes, I am plugging my class. If you have not registered for your CEU class in the state of South Carolina, I am hosting a class February 16th in Somerville, South Carolina. It is a salon business class. I keep getting texts and I keep getting phone calls. This is not about technique. I'm not teaching y'all no techniques. I'm tired of it. Everybody want to teach techniques, but ain't nobody teaching no business Y'all really ain't getting a bag like y'all say y'all want the bag because you don't even understand how much money you made last year. You don't even know how to go yourself properly to make the $150,000 or make the $250,000 that you didn't make last year. You don't even know how to get to the bag right. 
You ain't even retailing in your salon. When I say $60,000 worth of retail, I would make off my wall every year. People be looking at me like a deer caught in headlights. But then I taught a class last night in my live telling y'all how to get the bag. But too many of y'all want to be haters and don't want to watch and don't want to learn from somebody who has done it. And I'm over it. And it's real out here. You can get that money. But you got to position yourself accordingly. And you got to open your mind and think. And you have to know business. If you don't understand statistics, you will never, never make a million dollars in this industry doing what we do. Never. If you don't know how to sit and understand your profit and loss statement every single month, you ain't going to never get to the bag like you want to get to the bag. Because you're too busy worrying about your client paying $150 for a song and your mind has to be conditioned to new things. And I'm telling you guys, honestly, this is it going forward for me. Don't look for no techniques for me. Don't text me asking about no wig making class. Don't text me asking me about no hair extensions class. I'm not teaching none of that. For the people that want to get to the bag and get to the bag the right way and work less and work smarter, not harder. My boy Condor talk about it all the time. Work smarter, not harder. You can do less clients in a week and make three times the amount you would make by hustling in the salon all day trying to get in 100 clients in a week. You could do less work if you learn how to work smarter and if you understood your numbers in your business. We still out here buying retail product and marking it up 50%. Who told you that that was the way to do that? Because it's all based on your numbers. It's all based on your business. But our minds are so conditioned to follow behind what the distributor told us about our business when the distributors don't even know your business. Your distributor don't care nothing about your business. They don't care nothing about you. Only thing they want from you, for you to buy a product. That's it. So how you going to let a distributor tell you to mark your product up 50%? The devil is a liar. Not over here. You might get an 85% markup if you mess with the kid. Because, see, this is based off of supply and demand. First of all, the price of raw materials has gone up, honey. Every year, that dollar is changing. So if we are not marking our products every year, whatever you were charging for your product, you need to be going up at least 3% or higher, 3 to 5%. So you pay uh, $19 for some shine spray last year. This year, you're not paying $19. Know that. The cost of living changes. Everything changes. So why are we still doing services, a shampoo and style for $55 and $65? I wish I would. Are you kidding me? And right now, because the epidemic of hair loss is such a big thing, your clients are willing to pay top dollar for the shampoo and style and condition treatments because they're like, listen, I just don't want to be bald. Help me. Show me the way. Teach me what I need to do. And that's just the bottom line. So what are we going to do? Are we going to make a change? Are we going to keep doing lip service and keep talking? Are we really trying to get to the bag and service our clients in a way to where you can make more money per hour? Are we even goaling ourselves to make a certain amount per hour? Or are we basing ourselves flatline all the way across and not even thinking about it? You're just thinking about the service versus a baseline price all the way across the board every hour. Because this one right here, you're going to pay me $1,000 an hour to come speak at your event. Yep, sure are. I said it, and that's a base price. Don't play with me. I know my value. I know my worth. I have, I have taught for free for too long. I refuse to do it. And what I'm not going to do is let nobody cap me. You cannot let nobody cap you for what it is that's only inside of you. You are put in this industry for a purpose. You need to pray. You need to meditate. And you need to find out what am I supposed to do in this industry? Too many of us teaching the same thing. Too many of us focusing on the same thing. And ain't nobody innovating the industry. When we going to bring some innovation? Because I know I plan to, in the next couple of months, release a product. And I will be the first African-American cosmetologist to release what I'm going to release. And it's going to be good. And you know why I haven't been at Bronner Brothers for the past two years? Because I've been investing my money in my product. I don't give a hoot nanny about being on nobody's stage because ain't nobody paying me enough to be on their stage. You on that stage for exposure. You're at that show for exposure. You don't make no money at them shows. You know how much money it costs for you to go and set up a booth at a show? And hope to God they give you a free class. Because the class ain't free because you're paying for it anyway when you get the booth. So, boom. That's why. 
Straight up, that's on God. Straight up fact. The only people winning is the people putting on the show. So guess what? I ain't knocking you. I ain't hating it. That's what you need to do to get exposure and do what you need to do. But it has to come a time where we got to think smarter and say, wait a minute. Let me put my money in, put, in making my own product line. Let me innovate. Let me put my money in this. Let me put my money in that and bring something in the industry that's not here. There's too many people coming into the beauty industry and making millions of dollars and they don't even do hair. How is it possible? They're innovating. They're coming in with their business skills from the outside and they pulling it into our industry because they know we ain't got, we don't have the knowledge. But why don't we have the knowledge? Because we don't read. Why don't we have the knowledge? Because we don't want to go to a class unless it's a hair show. We don't want to pay a couple thousand dollars to go take a business course or go take a real marketing course. We don't want to sign up at our local universities and, and sit and, and learn how to use Excel and learn how to send out an, a normal email to anybody. We don't, half of us don't even know how to type. And I can attest to it. I had to get acclimated with the computer all over again. You know why? Because I was too busy being a business owner to consumer type business model. My business model don't change. I'm business to business. That means I'm a business that do business with business people. So because of that has changed for me, I had to result back to understanding how to function with my computer all over again. We got to go back to the basics in order for you to innovate and change. You have to be well-rounded. You cannot expect for things just to change if you're not putting forth the effort to make things change. And that's fact. A lot of our local uh, colleges, basic colleges, I'm talking technical schools, they got typing classes, go take one. They got accounting classes. Go take one because I don't understand what I'm doing here with my business. They got basic business classes. Go take one. Or, or better yet, how about open up your Kindle and start ordering some books and reading things on business? Because it's more to what it is that we're doing. It's not just about the physical hair. So that's it. I done talked enough. I done talked enough. I'm over it. I don't want to hear it no more. Nobody can't come back and say nothing because if you can't come with the facts, honey, I don't want to hear nothing. And that is word. And that is it. So I hope y'all enjoy everything I said. And I'm going to go ahead on and digress because that thing had me so bothered. I, I just I didn't realize there was so many of us. And when I tell you Atlanta, Georgia is infamous for it, several of my clients who are my wig clients, I don't do hair behind the chair no more. So if they're not getting a wig from me, it's just not, I just don't do it. So they're going to salons to get their hair done. And they're like, I had an appointment to get a weave, to get a frontal sewing. And the girl told me if I, because I didn't book for a shampoo, she wasn't going to shampoo my hair. And, and I just walked away and left because I'd never heard of anything like that before. Why is it not included in the service? And I told them it should be. And they came from somebody who did it. So that's that, y'all. That's my 20 plus years in this industry experience. I hope you guys go back and watch this again. Share it. Share it. Push it as much as you possibly can because our future professionals need a wake up call. They need a wake up call. Our whole industry needs a wake-up call. And if you see it, you see a stylist doing that, pull it to the side and say, sis, I, I don't mean, I'm not trying to throw no salt in your game, and I'm not trying to offend you, but I do want to let you know you are violating the law. And this could really turn bad on you one day. And that's what we need to do sometime. We need to just pull people to the side and just say what it is. And I know because I deal with salon owners now and when I go in and I see they don't have the right sanitation, I let them know, let me show you this. And I pull it up on my phone. This is what the state board says that you're supposed to have within your salon. These are the three different things you're supposed to have. You're supposed to have a, 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 a container labeled dirty implements. You're supposed to have another container labeled clean implements. You're supposed to have another container labeled dry implements 
and you're supposed to go through the proper procedure of cleaning all your combs and brushes every single day in hot soapy water. Once they are rinsed and thoroughly dried, that means if you got to dry them by hand and take a blow dry and blow dry them, then they are to be immersed in barbicide or a hospital EPA grade disinfectant. And it's supposed to sit in that solution for 10 minutes. You now take that out and you now put it in this other container and it is too dry and to be used the next day covered for the next use of the next day. That is supposed to happen in every salon and in every barber shop. And that's a fact. So if you've never heard of the entire process of sanitation and disinfection, I urge you to go to your state board LLR and look up the state board website for cosmetology and for barbering. And I approve this message. Good night.